as we get set for the next discipline, which is polo presented by the United States Polo Association. We invite you to turn your attention to the big screen or on your monitors if you're following on USCF Network to this video, Polo 101, produced by the United States Polo Association. Polo looks very different when it's part of the thoroughbred makeover than on the video that you saw, the, the, the way it normally takes place. And we have a video to show you of how Polo works when it is adapted into this competition at the thoroughbred makeover. So we want to show you that video. Polo is one of the oldest team sports in the world, originating in Persia 2,000 years ago. Justin Powers, the Director of Polo Development for the United States Polo Association, explains more about the sport. Traditionally, it was, it was a, a training method for cavalry um, officers and military personnel, and the sport kind of uh, spread across the globe through the colonialization of the British Empire. It's estimated that approximately 40% of polo ponies are thoroughbreds. At the thoroughbred makeover, horses and riders in the polo discipline perform a polo agility pattern and stick and ball work. You'll see a lot of uh, movements from different disciplines, ran uh, working ranch, some western movements, uh, a couple dressage movements, flying lead changes, things like that. We, we utilize English tack, but there's, there's a lot of western roots in polo, especially in the U.S. down the Cowboys in Texas. Then in the finals, there's also a three-on-three -three chucker. We had uh, told the participants the nice, easy green horse chucker, but the competitive nature is, I think, taking over. And I think they're responding to the crowd as well. 
Buckshot looking to win it at the end. He's got a good chance going towards goal. Oh, it's just wide off the post, still trying to rebound it. And he hits it high and in. Three seconds, two and one, and there it is, the blue team wins the inaugural chucker at the thoroughbred makeover. For the first pair to enter the arena, and it will be Write Your Story, a horse that is for sale as part of the ASPCA makeover marketplace, ridden by young Jim Deal from Culpeper, Virginia, part of that whippersnapper group that is at University of South Carolina, Aiken. And uh, Jim's older brother also plays polo. Uh, University of South Carolina Aiken's mascot is the Pacer, which is horse racing, but the wrong type of horse racing. But Aiken is a, you know, is a, is a historical place in horse racing, so a lot, of, uh, a lot of racehorses have stepped on the hollow grounds of the Aiken Training Center. It should be noted that uh, Jim broke his leg uh, this summer, so he really didn't even start riding until August, I think, with this mare. Um, and, and I say mare, I, I don't know if it's a mare or not, but most all the horses in polo are mares, so. And why is it? So this is your typical OTTB polo pony, young, diminutive, lightly raced. W what is it you're looking for and why? You know, a lot depends on the, the different, uh, the riders in particular, but you, you'll notice there's a lot of fillies and mares. I'd say probably overall, you know, at the higher levels, there's probably upwards of 90%, 80%, 90% of the horses are, are female horses competing. You know, I, I always say they have a little more fire. Um, you know, geldings are, a good gelding is a good gelding, but, you know, they, a good gelding might take a little longer to, um, you know, to make or to, to dive into the sport. Uh, the Phillies and Mares seem to be, have a little more fight in them, willing to uh, kind of go into plays and not know what's going to come out on the other side. You know, size-wise, you're looking at, you know, more of a, a, a thoroughbred that might look a little more like a quarter horse, 15 hands, 15-1. Uh, so we're kind of we're blessed in that when, when you go to the shed rows on the backside of the racetrack, you're not really competing with any uh, hunter-jumper trainers or anything trying to get horses. So the price kind of stays down on polo ponies. And Thankfully. you said about the fire that the mares can bring. What is it about the size? I, I think the size is just, you know, compared, also compared to other disciplines, you know, the size allows for a lot of the, you know, the, the, short, the short action movement and pull the lateral movements, you know, the stop and go, the rollback, um, you know, just quick little turns. So a 17-hand thoroughbred is just not going to be, you know, it's, it's going to be the old... Uh, the Chrysler Grand National versus a Ferrari in a, in a uh, car race. So. See the ears forward on Write Your Story, this unraced four-year-old filly with Jim Deal from the University of South Carolina, Aiken. Getting a round of applause as they exit the arena. They'll be back for the three-on-three -three chucker the seven minute chucker that will take place afterwards that was a lot of fun last year. It was a fun, you're a natural at calling it too. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to announce an event like this because you're announcing dressage, eventing, jumping, and throw some polo into the mix too. The crowd really got into it. Yeah, and the chucker is really meant to showcase the horse and to show you know, all the spectators here you know, here in the horse park and then everyone watching live stream what, you know, what polo looks like. And like I said, if you're interested in learning more about the sport, you know, feel free to go to uspolo.org or, or find me here and I'll be more than glad to connect you with, with a polo club in, you know, in your backyard. So next we have the horse Flatliner. And this is the first year that the team part of the Thoroughbred Makeover extended to all disciplines and riding the horse flatliner in the agility pattern is Buckshot, who yeah. is well known in the polo community here in the Lexington area. Yeah, Buck and his father Trey have been, you know, they've been the seasoned vets of the uh, makeover 
here at the horse park. They're local here at, uh, I believe their farm is River Mountain Farm here in Lexington. And, uh, you know, so they, they, they're based here in Lexington in the summertime and then go to Sarasota, Florida in the winter. So this is going to be one of two entries you're going to see here for the, uh, the Schott family, I believe, in the finals. Yes, we will be seeing Trey, but here we're seeing the River Mountain Farm team entrant. I actually bet on this horse once a Mountaineer, and I look at the name. So the horse finished up a racing career at Mountaineer. Last three starts were in West Virginia. It did win one of them, so that was probably the race. Probably not the race the I bet oh, on it, though. Okay. Well, it was a $75,000 purchase as a two-year-old in training, a horse that had a front-running style in sprint races in New York, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia. Shares a birthday with Secretariat, March 30th. Shares a birthday with me, March 30th. And retired in October of last year. So again, you can see some of the, uh, the lateral movements, tight turns, flying lead changes, you know, the stop and roll back into the fence there. We ask a lot of the polo ponies in competition, but honestly, the, you know, the good ones seem to really take to it naturally and love, you know, love the, the competitive nature of it, too. Really only started polo training in March of this year, has played some slow practice polo here at the Kentucky Horse Park this summer. The polo ponies tend to be very precocious. The River Mountain Farm Team entrant, ridden by Buckshot in this agility pattern. This was Flatliner. Next up will be the defending champion in polo. Last year, one with Tanya's pride. This is Courtney Durian from Cokiesville, Maryland, riding Ouija. Ouija sold as a yearling for $40,000, but made only one start at Finger Lakes in October of last year. Fifth, beaten 27 lengths, and has switched careers. A young three-year-old, so one of a couple three-year-olds who made it to the finals. You see the, uh, the responsiveness of, of Courtney's horse here on those lead changes and then going right into a stop. Also, you can see that you know the, the the bidding of the horses in polo varies depending on what you know what the horses' needs are. Courtney's riding in a gag with draw reins, whereas Buck uh, just left the arena with a Pelham with straight reins on. Really depends on you know you know finding out what works best with the horse. And, and I'm going to start a reality show someday called Bit Wars because sometimes you get a little bit uh, you know creative with everything. So nice little turn there by Courtney. Courtney, a great rider, born in Baltimore, came to Lexington to study and play polo at the University of Kentucky and played in the, and won the polo national championships in college, played professionally overseas as well. Spends her winters training in Wellington, Florida and summers in Denver, Colorado. Nice, nice little lead changes right there. Courtney brings her to a halt and asks for a few steps back, showing the softness of her mouth. You can see uh, Ouija's a three-year-old here, which is, you know, Probably one of the younger horses in the polo competition, but obviously want to you know try to get as much foundation work in them as we can when they're young. Pat on the back for Ouija from Courtney as Duria. Philly lets out a sigh of relief. While you're 
following the competition, the vendor fair is open. You can check out the booths, all of the different organizations that are represented, aftercare, horse merchandise, memorabilia, and clothing. And the silent auction is going on. It will close at 4 o'clock. Last opportunities to bid on silent auction items that will close at 4. And if you like what you see, next year's Thoroughbred Makeover is going to take place the same weekend. So already looking forward to next year is next up we will see the young and talented rider Harry Caldwell from Taft, Tennessee aboard Silken Lady. Harry wanted to turn the volume up here inside the TCA covered arena so we will oblige him. Justin, the Caldwells, they started with Polo Cross. Can you explain what that is and the transition to Polo? Yeah, I can, I can give it my best to explain co Polo Cross. But in, in short, if you imagine lacrosse and Polo combined, it would be Polo Cross. But it's big in the Pony Club world. Harry and Char his brother Charlie both grew up in the Pony Club world. Um, and then they, they transitioned to Polo after attending a clinic that the uh, USPA sponsored, I believe at uh, Blue Water Creek Polo Club in Alabama. They've, they've both went on to represent their, uh, their zones in the National Youth Tournament Series championships. And then as uh, mentioned earlier, they, uh, the brothers compete with Jim Deal on the USD Aiken uh, inter intercollegiate team. There's about 40 colleges that offer polo as a uh, competitive sport, club sport, across the country. All right, Harry, that's time there. Harry Caldwell and Silken Lady, who came into the finals in second place behind this next pair. Silken Lady ran at Charlestown. Charlestown's very well uh, represented here this year, so shout out to the uh, Charlestown racetrack. First place coming into the finale is Buckshot aboard Great Reward. Great Reward, a four-year-old chestnut filly, well-bred, sired by Candy Ride, sold for $110,000 at the Keeneland September sale in 2016. So polo is, is huge. It's probably one of the largest sports in Argentina and Candy Ride is an Argentinian bred racehorse. So hopefully uh, this, this horse got a little bit from the, uh, the homeland. Buck says the horse is very athletic and balanced with a chestnut mare Candy Ride personality. Nice little rollback there. Just two starts for this horse. Ninth place finish in New York in 2017. 12th at Gulfstream Park in Florida in 2018. Rehabbed 
in Versailles from a soft tissue injury and turned out for three months last October, started polo training with Buck in February. So you'll notice some of the horses have a roach mane, some don't. Buck's horse here still has its mane. Uh, you know, it's kind of a rite of passage in the polo world that once, you know, once the, uh, once the horse is considered made, made you roach its mane um, to keep out of the way of the mallet and the reins. In polo, the riders are, you know, riding predominantly with one hand, but sometimes with two hands, and they're constantly adjusting two reins, as you can see, not just one rein. So it gets a little difficult adjusting reins when you got a mane, but it's kind of a little bit of a rite of passage. Um, you know, that the green horses or the young horses still have a mane. It also tells people when you're playing young horses in polo that you're on a young horse. And Buck has uh, this horse's tail done up as well, which in the chucker here, momentarily, you'll, you'll see why that is the case. So the first part of the finale for polo is done. It is the agility work, which riders chose to do without stick and ball. And now the fun begins. We're gonna just let the players get warmed up a little bit here. And uh, like I said, in, in the blue and white, we have the Aiken squad. And then in the tur turquoise or teal, we got the Lexington team based out of River Mountain Farms. And again, you can see Paul Knapp from Grand Rapids, Michigan, got the number three on his back for the Lexington squad. So we have Trey Shot aboard Flatliner from the River Mountain Farm team, Buckshot aboard Great Reward. Paul Knapp is aboard Girls Dance Party. That's your Lexington team in the River Mountain Farm baby blue colors. And then the navy blue colors, Team Aiken. Harry Caldwell rides Silken Lady. Courtney is Jurian aboard Ouija. And Jim Deal aboard Write Your Story. So the players, traditionally polo starts with what's called a bull-in. So you think of, think of it almost like a uh, face-off. So Lindsay Dolan's going to... Uh, the steward for the polo discipline is going to get it started off with a bull in once Trey's got his horse warmed up. For those of you who haven't seen, who hasn't seen polo out there before? All right. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a competitive thing. This isn't golf. This isn't dressage. You can hoot and holler. You can yell and scream. Get into it a little bit. If you have time, you can go get a, a, a beverage if you'd like. Um, but this is, this is here. We're here to showcase the horse. You guys are going to see some, uh, some great, great animals and some great riders. Um, interacting all together here. This was one of the most popular moments at the finale last year, and the way the, the polo contingent conducts themselves at the makeover, they're such great representatives for the sport. All right, let's have some fun, the polo chucker for 2019. All right, all right so the ball's in play here. Courtney Astorian gets an offside back shot off, going to be intercepted there by teammate Harry Caldwell. Caldwell can't connect on. Jim Deal's going to move it past midfield there, but looks like Buck Shot's going to be there. No, Trey Shot's going to be there to defend. Trey goes for the hook, gets the hook, leaves it for his son, Buck. Buck working it towards the wall. He's going to try to turn it back past midfield. Buck with a booming shot down past midfield. He's going to drop on his own line. Buck's letting the horse roll. Oh, he's following his own shot. It'll go off of the wall. Second chance, it's in. Lexington getting on the board first. So we're going to play continuous play, guys, so just bring it in. So in a normal game, we'd come back to the center here and uh, bowl the ball in, but uh, for today, we're just going to kind of do what's called continuous play. So Buck's going to bring the ball in, looking to try to get it up to his dad. Jim Deal's going to drop on it, turn it back, showing off that horse's lateral movement there. Jim going to leave it for Courtney. Courtney's going to take the ball on the near side, trying to get it into the corner. Buck's there, ooh! <laughs> Buck opened the gate and closed the gate. Jim fighting there with Trey. Jim right in front of the goal. 
in for the score. So it's 1-1, one, one, Aiken 1, Lexington 1. Last year it was Buckshot who got the game-winning goal. Now Jim Deal's working it, showing off some nifty stick work. Going to put it in for a score going up, Aiken up 2-1. to one. Their teammates, Jim Deal and Harry Caldwell on the Aiken South Carolina Pacers team, so showing their teamwork here. Now Courtney's going to bring the ball down in the right-hand corner. Trey's going to come in for a write-off. Courtney's going to shoot towards goal. Looks like it's going to get up there in front. Buck's going to try to clear it out of danger zone. He staying with it, but going to try to make a play into the wall. Got a little bit of a hook there from Trey. Harry's now going to go for a back shot towards goal. Gets it there, but Trey's going to be on it first. Trey's going to hit a back shot. Buck calls for the back shot. Jim Deal's going to meet it. He taps it forward. Nice tip by Jim. Buck going to ride, try to ride uh, Jim off. There's some trash talking going on on the field. This is also why you usually play pole with the referee, but um, that's all right. We're just showcasing the horses here. Trey fanned on that one. Jim Deal's going to go to it. He takes the ball on the near side. As you can see, we play the ball off both sides of the horse. Harry Caldwell hits it down towards goal. Buck's going to... Two on one. Check down. Looks like he's going to hit a little open back shot. Gets his own back shot. Courtney comes in to challenge. I'm Buck still got the ball. Buck's looking to go all the way. He's all alone. Oh! Oh, still in front of the goal. <laughs> I noticed there's a bunch of people just moved out of those seats over there. They must be... <laughs> know what's going on. All right, Courtney's got control of the ball. They're going faster than they were last year. How much time's left? There's 30 minutes left. We're going to do this all day. <laughs> so now Team Lexington trying to make a move. Buckshot, he's in the same position as last time. Can he finish? Wide the other way. Split the distance next time. Battle for it down low. We have Aiken leading two to one on Lexington. We got 30 seconds left to play. Maybe overtime. <laughs> Hopefully overtime. <laughs> Trey's going to sneak in there and try to make a play. That Good pressure, though, from the Lexington team. And now we're getting Paul Knapp in the mix. Trying to chase after the ball. Here's Buck with some good stick handling. Oh, it's taken away by Harry Caldwell. What a maneuver in transition. Nice and that's Chugger. defense. <laughs> Chucker, guys. Chucker. What do you think, fans? Did you like that? <laughs> so as is customary, any polo game ends with a handshake. Again, it's, a, it's, it's more about the horses than about the sport. It's competitive, but everyone's uh, you know, friends at the end. And um, they might get a little heated on the field, but can step over the sideboards and have a good time. So. Team Aiken, Harry Caldwell, Jim Deal, and Courtney is Durian 2, defeating Team Lexington 1, Trey Shot, Buck Shot, and Paul Knapp. <laughs> Finishing in 10th place, rider number 333, your polo announcer, Justin Powers, aboard Pleasant Truth. Winning a ribbon at his first ever horse show. Ninth place, rider number 236, Michael Gruber, aboard Lady Violet M. Eighth place, number 157, Kimberly Durling and Gabby's Girl. Seventh place, the Willowbrook Polo Farms team riding Lady Driven. Sixth place, number 159, you saw them in the Chucker, Paul Knapp and Girls Dance Party. 
Fifth place was the River Mountain Farm team aboard number 145, Flatliner. Finishing in fourth place, number 470, Jim Deal and Write Your Story. Third place, number 384, Silken Lady, ridden by Harry Caldwell. In second place, number 316, Ouija and Courtney S. Durian. First place, the 2019 TCA Thoroughbred Makeover Polo Champion. Number 165, Great Reward and Buckshot. Polo ponies coming back in with their ribbons. Getting great recognition after an entertaining finals that showed their foundational work on the flat and then finishing up with a lively entertaining three on three chucker that Team Aiken won over Team Lexington. Really a great representation for the sport of polo by these great riders and promising horses. Earlier today in the jumping disciplines, you saw a variety of accessories with the jumps. There were plants, pumpkins, straw, corn stalks. They're outside of the ASPCA arena and for a donation to RRP, you can take home some of those various decorations, perfect with the fall season taking place. One more time, let's recognize the polo ponies. Congratulations to Buckshot and great reward.